Hello everybody and welcome to another book review here on the channel. My first one since I kind of got a bit upset with Ready Player Two, but luckily this is a tremendous step up from that point and that is going to be the sequel to Red Rising, Golden Sun. Following Darrow as he, a gold in disguise, or sorry, a red in disguise as a gold, tries to navigate his way through a complex political landscape. This was, ooh, quite the improvement from the first book. I liked Red Rising. I thought it was a fine start to a series. I had my issues with it, but coming into Golden Sun, I tampered my expectations because the fans kept saying, hey, it's so much better, it's so much better. But if I bought into that and it wasn't, I would be, you know, dis 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 disappointed. I didn't want to be disappointed. I wanted to be happy. So I was like, all right, I expect exactly what I got before. And I was pleasantly surprised. This is is better, quite better. So my criticisms for Red Rising largely came down to what I thought was kind of just me not vibing with the usage of first person, a story that was buying into a trend at the time that I felt actually held back quite a bit of the potential, and a main protagonist that just kind of seemed a bit typical for me. I didn't get a clear enough vision for Darrow to really buy into him emotionally. Now though, Golden Sun has pretty much stepped it up on every front, and I feel like that is largely because we are not constrained to the setting of the first book, where we're just kind of walking through a battle royale with a couple neat angles to it, but nothing game-changing for that subgenre. Here, we are immersed in the full, wider political landscape, only really hinted at, not fully experienced in the first book, and I'm thrilled to say that helps oh so much with the narrative of this book's delivery. There's a fan on. There's this like insurmountable climb the protagonist has to go through. And I think this is one of probably the greatest achievements of the setting this story is taking place in, where it's like, no matter how many victories Daro has, it never feels like we're done. There's this constant next step. And it's not tiring because he's making significant progress. So as a reader, you're very invested in nearly everything he does. And he has setbacks, but it never feels like he's tumbling all the way down the mountain. So as a reader, you become like exhausted. It's just a really nice, tactile, you feel it climb upward. For some reason, I'm thinking of that no PS5 game where you have to like shake the controller to climb up and it like vibrates and gives you haptic feedback each way. That's Golden Sun for me for some reason. So I found myself extremely interested in the greater picture of this story, how this society was evolving, this plot to basically subvert and pull out the rug from the establishment and allow the underclass to come on top. It felt like it was finally reaching the full potential established in the first book. And not only that, but the character of Darrow and everyone around him, I definitely got a much better grasp of. And I care about Darrow way more. And that's because I feel like this book actually presented him much more humanly than the first one. In the first book, he's almost kind of like Tao from Rage of Dragons. He's just a ball of anger who's determined to win at all costs. And I actually prefer Tao's execution over Darrow's in the first book. It was fine. It was a decent vehicle to experience a battle royale through, kind of having someone who is the overwhelming offensive force. That's something I haven't entirely seen for a battle royale story. But I can't help but look back at the first book and wish that was delivered differently. I'm okay with it being the story it is, but I'm trying to picture a way in which these two books are combined and we're actually going through the narrative of the second and experiencing like the first through flashbacks or something. I don't know if that would necessarily work, but I just didn't enjoy the first book nearly as much and I feel like it could have been handled better if it was delivered in a more creative way. My only large criticism still remains as someone who has come to like first person narratives more and more, I'm not in love with Pierce Brown's handling of it. I enjoy his prose. He actually has pretty decent prose. It's not overly fancy or super flowery. It's definitely more in that drier, brutal side of things. With some beauty laid in, I will say he's not an ugly writer at all. This actually has some really fantastic descriptions going on. But there is something about the way he specifically comes from Darrow's perspective. His first person delivery in that sense was a hurdle for me to overcome to finally get that connection with this character. And it never entirely in a way, I just had to adjust. Maybe it'll get better as the books progress. I hope it does. But I do want to go on to actually really praise the prose as a whole here because especially when it comes to naming things, whether it's people or events, strategies. Pierce Brown has a gift, uh, whether it's calling the invasion an iron rain as soldiers descend through the atmosphere, or even just like the naming of characters like Nero. It's just 
really helps the overall vibe and tone and atmosphere of the story. And that tone and vibe is this beautiful mixture of like Roman aesthetics coming in with a sci-fi future dystopian angle, all blends and then the political dynamics going on. There's just so much to enjoy. I also did bring up uh, what I felt was kind of a rough uh, representation of female characters in the last book that's entirely solved here. It also actually makes me kind of reframe the first book more where I was like, okay, maybe it's just that specific situation we're in. There was that problem and now that we're out of it, it's a lot more just everyone has their own agency, they're standing on equal footing, and I appreciate that. It's unlike one book I recently read, which tried to address criticisms and just did it in a really ham-fisted, gross way. <laughs> this one did it appropriately with proper tact and wove it into the narrative with care and subtlety. Good job. If you're an author who receives criticism for something, I'm not saying Pierce Brown did respond to this criticism, it just definitely kind of felt that way to me. This is the way to do it with an actual investment and clear time taken in to improve these angles, if that's what he did. If he didn't and it just happens to be better, good on him for that too as well. I feel like I have to overlay all of that within my opinion, even though every review ever is someone's opinion on everything they talk about. I'm always more than happy to see a sequel step up from the first entry for a series because it's so often the case that the first book's the strongest and then it's just a descent into a weaker status from there, right? Authors have a really strong initial vision and then they begin to fall apart and it's only just a steady downhill slope into no longer worth reading. But this significant step up shows me an author who's not only improving with their craft, but a vision that has staying power. And that's why I'm definitely going to be picking up the third book. And boy oh boy, does Golden Sun set up a third book? I don't want to get too much into spoilers here, but there is so much political maneuvering going on, some of which is predictable, a lot of which is not, but it's all believable that it really does feel like Pierce Brown laid out a plan and is executing it wonderfully, finding a very specific and proper balance, how much to foreshadow to the reader, how much to let you suspect, and then really understanding where you'll be in a mental space and coming in from a direction where it feels earned and justified, so certain angles of it will be like, yeah, I saw that coming. Well, there are still moments that'll hit you in the gut. I'll say my standout characters here are going to be Jackal, obviously, Mustang, and Daro. I don't really know who the fan favorites are. I haven't been plugged into this fan base in any way, shape, or form. Those ones for me are the ones I was watching the closest, especially Daro's evolving relationship with Jackal. Just, ooh, ah, I love it. Where's it gonna go? And book three, thousand percent down for. So the plot's solid, the relationship dynamics are interesting, the characters underneath are well realized and creative, the setting itself is interesting, and the whole world is not wholly original and different, but it's definitely injecting certain aesthetic choices that make you as the reader feel like it's new. I mean, if you've read a lot of sci-fi, there's not a whole lot happening here that hasn't been somewhat done before, but it's this beautiful accumulation of many different ideas with a overlay, a skinning that makes it stand out from the crowd that really makes this feel fresh and enjoyable. So overall for Golden Sun, I'm feeling a rock solid 8.5 out of 10. It's not the best thing I've read all year, but it's definitely got me here for book three, and I'm really excited to see if this series continues to improve. And how did I forget to mention how good the action is? God damn, this is some good action. Anyway guys, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the page Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreon, Unknown Soldier.